Oi ya! Okay, so hey everyone, this video is mainly to help those looking to fly a plane with tips from my own experience. But it's also for those of you who are like me who really struggle to actually get a plane up there. Just so that you guys know, it's actually taken me over six months to actually get a working plane. So I'm hoping this can help limit your frustrations. If you're wanting to just see how I started, then you can watch my previous video. Otherwise, let's get started with the first tip, which is that I totally recommend having a landing gear. This is mainly because without the landing gear, you're not able to figure out how to control the plane and you don't really know the controls. So with the landing gear, you're able to play around with it a little bit and then take off which makes it so much easier. At first, I didn't actually have one, and this caused me so many frustrations because I'd throw the plane and it would go straight into the ground, which, yeah, was really lame. And this was honestly one of my biggest issues with learning how to fly. So in the next tip, totally choose a plane that is actually doable to build and to fly. For me, I was determined to build mine, and I wasn't so good at it. So the planes that actually worked the best for me was the Flight Test Nutball and RC Test Flight Sled, which at this point I wish I would have had that sled sooner because it is a great learning plane because it already has the landing gear built in place. It's not with wheels, but it works very well. You've probably already heard of this next tip, but it's very important and useful, which is to make sure your center of gravity is in the right place. Having it way more in the front is preferable to a tail heavy plane, which would mean that you only have the plane once. For building, I'd recommend going over the same spot multiple times to make sure it's a clean cut. I didn't realize this was so important, and it shows on my previous planes. For the electronics, I found having a motor and an ESC have connectors instead of soldering has actually been extremely useful. And as a plus, there's actually a cheap pack on Amazon that has an ESC. But unfortunately, the ESC doesn't have the same battery connector as mine, so I also got spare XT60 connectors and replaced the ESC battery connector with it. But with it, the kit also has a motor, a couple of servos, and it even has a couple of propellers. But I would still recommend getting others, since I found they broke really quite easily, even with my first flight with those propellers. Granted, the first flight I had with them, they did go straight into concrete. But still, I found these triplops to be way better. The only electronics you need are a transmitter, receiver, and battery. And you can also have a camera if you're wanting to record the flight of the plane itself, like I did. These were definitely the most expensive part of the project, with the transmitter costing upwards to of around $200. Since I did get a more expensive transmitter, because I want to be able to use it for a whole bunch of different tasks in the future. I also wanted it to be able to work with many other receivers. So this TX-16S has worked great for that. Originally for the receiver, I got a FrySky one that cost $40, but annoyingly, the first flight I ever had with it, if granted it was not a successful one, the antennas actually broke. And then recently, I got another receiver that cost half as much, and it works just as well. And the antenna hasn't actually broken. For the batteries, I got a two-pack of 3-cell 1300 Ma Simpum batteries. Pretty sure it's called Simpum, but I'd have to double check. <laughs> By the way, for those that don't know, one cell is 3.7 volts and two cell is basically combining two of the one cell batteries to get double the voltage, which is more power. So that would make three cell 11.1 volts. And then the ma is basically how much capacity the batteries have. So the higher is typically better, but I would still check the reviews to see if they're actually accurate. Camera wise, I didn't really want to spend a lot on a GoPro, so I bought a $100 run cam, which I've actually really quite liked. Okay, so that's quite a lot of components. Feel free to look them up yourself, but if you don't feel like doing that and you want to support me, I'll have the links below, which will be affiliate, but don't worry, that won't cost you anything extra. It would just give me a little bit of the compensation. Aside from everything I mentioned about the electronics already, the other issues I had came down to putting the screws in too far, which shorted a motor. Yeah, that was pretty lame. It was also a little difficult to bind the receiver to the transmitter, but luckily there's a nice video about that I'll link below. By the way, if you're planning on getting the cheaper $20 receiver, then just know that even though it has no name brand, it still is compatible with the Spectrum receivers, so when using it with the TX-16S, you have to bind it as if it were a Spectrum receiver. 
Well, there we have it. I hope these tips helped you, and I wish you luck on your own RC plane adventures. With that, I'm gonna go try and fly. Though, you can see Copper might bark at it. Perfecto! Let's go! <laughs>